Antarctica, one of the world's most mysterious continents, home to one of the largest and driest deserts on the planet, covering an area of around 5.5 million square miles. If there was anywhere on Earth where crashed, preserved, ancient alien technologies could still be found, it would be here. An untouched landscape, which may in all possibility be the final resting place as of yet unretrieved relics, which may have been stranded there to this day. The deep sea which surrounds Antarctica, for example, are some of the most difficult and inhospitable environments to explore anywhere. Far away from the modern world, deep within the frigid, pitch-black waters of this massive chunk of ice, where our next discovery was miraculously made. An out-of-place artifact which is still resting at the bottom of this sea. Known as the Eltanen Antenna, if it wasn't for the brute strength of the nearly 2,000-ton ice-breaking vessel known as the Eltanen, we may never have found it. Initially a U.S. Navy cargo-carrying icebreaker, in 1962, she was reclassified as an oceanographic research ship and became the world's first dedicated Antarctic research vessel. On the 29th of August 1964, while collecting sample cores and photographing the seabed west of Cape Horn, the Altanen took the first known photograph of the antenna at a depth of nearly 4,000 meters. The first public mention of the unusual object would not surface for several months. A news item, which appeared in the New Zealand Herald on 5 December 1964, under the heading, Puzzle Picture from the Seabed, would briefly disclose the discovery, yet any further exploratory missions, if indeed there has been any, have been operating in secret. Similar to the Baltic Sea anomaly, yet positioned at a far deeper depth, in an extremely remote, cold, and lonely part of our world, it too shows all the hallmarks of an artificially created object. The question is, what could it be? And more importantly, what was or is its function? In 1968, author Brad Steiger wrote an article for Saga magazine in which he claimed that the Altanen had in fact photographed, quote, an astonishing piece of machinery, very much like the cross between a TV antenna and a telemetry antenna. End quote. It is interesting to note that the Black Knight satellite, an anomalous object which is in a polar orbit, has been declared by numerous investigators throughout history as an artificial alien satellite, and with what appears to be an enormous alien antenna resting on the Antarctic seafloor. Is it possible that the two are connected? Or possibly in communication with each other? In 2003, Tom DeMary, a researcher in underwater acoustics contacted oceanographer A.F. Amos, a member of the Altanen's crew in the 1960s, in an effort to debunk any theory involving artificial design. In turn, Amos referred to Mary to the 1971 book The Face of the Deep by Bruce C. Heason and Charles D. Hollister. It seems Hollister had already attempted to identify the mysterious object as a carnivorous sea sponge. However, these attempts to discredit any unusual hypothesis was solely based on the same photographs we are privileged to. Further photographic exploration of the object, if undertaken, has been done in complete isolation from the public. What is the Altanen antenna? A mere sea sponge? An actual alien antenna? Whatever it is, it seems certain fields of study would like you to believe it's natural regardless of whether confirmation of such claims was made, we always find this highly compelling. If we could prove beyond doubt that our continued posit of an ancient, once highly advanced yet pre-Ice Age civilization once existing here on our planet, we would literally have to rewrite our understandings of antiquity. We have covered numerous sites, found submerged all around the world,
Yet, unfortunately, due to their proximity to islands and the continental regions they are found amongst, many are dismissed as merely being 5 to 10,000 year old ruins, fitting with modern paradigm and, alas, avoiding controversy or the questions which inevitably follow. Yet our next side of interest may turn out to not only be that most important of submerged ruins ever found on Earth, but the smoking gun previously mentioned. On the 19th of May 2001, India's Union Minister for the Science and Technology Division, Murli Manohar Joshi, announced that the ruins of an ancient civilization had been discovered off the coast of Gujarat, in the Gulf of Kambahat. The site was discovered by INOT, National Institute for Ocean Technology. Using sonar, the discovered ruin is now being strongly argued as definitively pre-Ice Age, yet also advanced in nature. NIOT went on to describe an area of regularly spaced artificial structures. Located 20 kilometers from the Gujarat coast and spans 9 kilometers, Joshi claims the site as an urban settlement that predates the Indus Valley Civilization. Further descriptions of the site by Joshi describe it as containing regularly spaced dwellings, a granary, a bath, a citadel, and a drainage system. According to Wiki, quote, the structures and artifacts discovered by NIOT are the subject of contention. The major disputes surrounding the Gulf of Kambat cultural complex are claims about the existence of submerged city-like structures, the difficulty associating dated artifacts with the site itself, and disputes about whether stone artifacts recovered at the site are actually geofacts or artifacts. One major complaint is that artifacts at the site were recovered by dredging instead of being recovered during a controlled archaeological excavation." End quote. Simply put, Due to the fact that it has not been excavated properly, and we predict probably never will, academia are dismissing this ancient city as simply unconfirmed. We feel a quite ridiculous position to take despite NIOT's supporting data of its existence due to its accidental discovery, presumably via dredging. We find the marine archaeology in the Gulf of Kambat highly compelling. Hello fellow YouTubers, welcome back. There is an old adage which states, a history unknown has a habit of repeating itself. As such, we will continue to provide reruns of hand-picked content repeating on MH2. A link can be found in the description. For instead of avoiding an inevitability, we continue to add reinforcement to the arguments in regards to whether man experienced this. And if so, how advanced were they, and most importantly, who? Passionately believing, with a continual mounting mountain of supporting anomalies and direct contradictions to mainstream paradigm, a historical correction, for to possibly avoid such an event again, we all must work unrelentingly to unravel the existence of these past mysteries of history, to know where we came from. The beliefs, technologies, age, and chronology of at least four lost civilizations we feel have been identified yet alas, regardless of whether there were four, more, or just one now lost civilization, the mystery remains regarding the sudden causes of their eventual demise. To expand our knowledge of not only world history, but to answer the question of the ages, where did we come from? Our work, our mission, our endeavor here on Mystery History is to expose smoking guns of conspiracy, the artifacts, ruins, megaliths, and other ancient high technologies which were all conveniently ignored by those who tow, or rather make a living, from the funding of mainstream historical paradigms. The undeniable evidence of a once highly capable group or groups accomplished incredible feats of ancient architectural, engineering, advanced metallurgy, and so on, 
baffling, often far too advanced, and as such, out-of-place artifacts, and the, as we perceive, overwhelming evidence for once existing yet now lost civilizations. Furthermore, the exposure of the additionally yet equally abundant evidence for these multiple groups having experienced some abrupt, sudden extinction vanishing amidst their workings, seemingly in an instant, yet were, we feel, displayed incredible capability and were, at the time of these vanishing acts, in a position of apparent flourishment. Polygonal joinery, gigantic megalithic building blocks, singing 1,000-plus ton statues, specifically of Memnon, the pregnant woman of Lebanon, also north of the 1,000 tons mark, the east wing megaliths of Cheops. And Yangshan Quarry was also seemingly abandoned in an instant, had a stone that was busily being liberated from Earth's bedrock, is estimated to weigh over 16,000 tons. We suspect these huge stones and subsequent efforts in movement and placement were all deliberately motivated to not only show prowess and power, but also to leave a lasting reminder upon our planet, one to indicate their past existence. Footprints on coal, iron, and zinc pots found in or blown from multi-million-year-old strata, many found yet subsequently quote, lost over the years are all indications to support our posit here upon our channel. Many questions remain unanswered. It is a journey of discovery which we find highly compelling.